Hi there and welcome to the video. My name's Gareth and today I'm going to be showing you how to remove really tricky objects in Photopea. Like in this example, we're going to try and remove the woman from this shot and this is going to be very tricky for two reasons. One is that she's covering a large portion of the frame so there's not a huge amount of background information to rebuild from. And also, if you look at the background itself, it starts off very sharp and in focus near her feet and it very quickly starts to blur out into the distance. And this is going to give tools like Content Aware Fill a very hard time, and that probably won't work. So I'm going to show you an alternative technique, a bit of an advanced technique, to um, try and deal with shots like this. So let's just create a duplicate of the background layer by pressing Command J or Control J if you're on a PC. And I'm just going to select the lasso tool, and just to kind of almost prove the point that content aware fill won't be effective in this scenario. I'm just going to make a very loose selection around her, making sure not to go into the edges. I'm just going to, we're going to give content aware fill a chance and just see what it does. So now that selection's live, I'll press shift and F5 to get to my fill dialog. And we're going to select content aware fill and click OK. Now this does take a little bit of time in photo P, so We'll just give it a minute to do what it's uh, attempting. There's a lot of complex processing going on in the background of content aware fill. It's quite complex. So there we go. Okay, so it's done a pretty terrible job, which is not surprising on an image like this. You can see it's really struggled down here to actually understand which bits go where. It's tried to pick similar colors and similar tones but as you can see it's tried it's put a really out of focus bit down here and it just looks a real mess so let's undo that so what if you did have to get rid of this if someone was paying you to work on this image and they said i want you to remove this woman from the background well i'm going to show you an alternative way now and it involves breaking it up into little pieces into more bite-sized pieces and using a combination of the clone tool and the patch tool. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here, just in case you don't know what the patch tool is. If I show you an example here, with the patch tool selected, the idea being that you can make a selection around any area of the image. It's got to be on a pixel layer, by the way, it can't be on an empty layer. And then you can drag and move it. And as you can see, it's updating in real time the target that you want to replace it with. So it's almost like you're patching the selection with the area where you're now moving the mouse. So if I move my mouse cursor up here, it's going to attempt to patch her legs with the grass, which is obviously going to look silly, but that's what it's trying to do. It's taking the, the target and the source of the patch and doing its best to kind of blend them together. So we're going to use that um, to our advantage. But first, let me just zoom in a little bit. We need to break the subject down into smaller chunks in order for the um, patch tool to be able to handle it. And what I mean by that is we're going to start down by the feet and with our clone tool selected with a nice soft brush on the clone tool, make it soft. And I'm just going to start sampling and almost creating breaks in the subject, which in this case is this woman. So as you can see here, I'm just almost roughly cloning bits of the background through um, to create like almost little islands of information in the image. And it's important with this, anything you're doing like this, because the focus falls off sort of um, bottom to top, to try and keep wherever possible your um, cloning and patching or anything like that um, side to side and not up and down otherwise you're going to introduce different areas of focus into it which will make it look bad so let me just zoom out a little bit so I'm just going to go through this quite quickly and um, just sort of break this down it doesn't have to be accurate all you're doing is making a rough getting a rough representation of the background what would be behind this lady here um, and all this is all this is going to do is when we go on to the next stage, which is the patch tool, it's just going to make the patch tool's life a lot easier because it's going to have smaller areas of information to try and handle. And let me just do this. 
And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We can always go back and fix things towards the end of the shot. And there's no specific areas. Oh, let's go up to the head. Let's do it up here. There's no specific areas. There's no right or wrong in terms of exactly where to where to make these splits. It, it's really just up to experimenting. It might be that some areas work better than others. I mean, try to keep it, you know, relative. I mean, it's not super accurate. It doesn't have to be, but it does still have to be representative of the background color behind. So where she would be there, it's green because behind where her head would be. You can see these um, trees and hedges in the background. It's going to get a little bit tricky as we go down to this shoulder area because it starts off with this um, gravel colour here, or this gravel texture here, but then maybe two-thirds of the way across it sort of turns into grass. So we're just going to do a bit from that side, do a bit from this side. Now this, this looks silly at the moment, but trust me, it will make sense in a few moments when we go on to the next stage. Okay, let's let's start with that. So we've done that little prep stage. Let me zoom in. And now we're going to get to our patch tool, which is this one here. Make sure the mode is set on source for how we want to work. And all we're going to do now, and again, you have to do this on a um, pixel layer and not on a blank layer. So maybe press Command J again just to give yourself a little backup. And we'll just draw the patch tool selection around one of the smaller chunks, making sure that when we go through this gap we've made, this little break, that we don't go into, like here, the skin. Make sure this is why you make them quite wide, so you can isolate that. And then all we're going to do is we're going to drag that sideways with the patch tool. I mean, you can try and see if you can do it over here, yeah. See if you can patch a similar area of texture in. And as you can see, that's done a pretty good job of blending that in. Whereas if we'd have tried that on the same area of the shot without making that break, it would have left all this ugly bleeding where it would try to blend it into the skin texture. But because we've made this physical break, it's given it a clean object to patch. And we'll do the same with this. So we'll select that and we'll just drag it to the side. Again, important to drag it to the side because if you drag it up, as you can see, it's going to try and blend a more out of focus piece in there which just won't work so you've got to try and match the focus and we'll let go of that so as you can see I'm just going to go through the image now doing the same thing and if you get some spots that don't look quite right or you, you see some more repetition don't worry about that because they're the those little things we can kind of fix at the end of the shot what I like to do with things like this is try and do the heavy lifting as it were earlier on and then any little things that crop up in the meantime any little problems don't worry about those at all because they're the kind of things that will just take you a few minutes at the end of the image to fix now as we get further up in this particular shot it is going to get a little bit trickier because as you can see now to get enough of the the pathway or the gravel next to next to a dress to actually patch it in you're starting to introduce a little bit of the green from the grass but we'll just we'll just do that and actually it's blended that away quite nicely and you can just go back in with smaller patches and just fix little bits as you go or you can do them at the end not a problem and it's going to get trickier the more we go up this one especially when we get nearer ahead so again because of the focus fall off on this we have to go to the side we can't go too much down i mean maybe we can get away with going down a little bit as especially as it gets more out of focus no as you can see there we've gone down and it's actually it doesn't look right because it's brought some more slightly more in focus texture there so we'll undo that what we could do in this stage because if i try and drag this to the side it's going to bring grass into the shot so if i let go there let's see what happens it's actually not done a bad job it's um it's guessed quite well that that grass color should be blended into the sort of grey colour of the gravel, which is quite nice. So we'll just keep moving up. Right, now this is where it might get very tricky, because as you can see there, I don't think there's any way it's going to accurately... No, you see, if I've tried to do that, it's bringing too much of that grass colour and texture in. So we'll undo that. What we can do in this scenario... Again, this is a very tricky one. This is not a typical example, but I thought if I showed you the worst case scenario, 
you would be armed to tackle anything. We're going to make another split in this one because this chunk is proven problematic. So I'm going to actually start from parallel to the little break we made there. And just roughly in the middle of it, I'm just going to go down. Now, I know I said earlier not to go up and down, but because we are we are making a vertical um, line here, we do want it to follow the, the change in focus. And again, it's, it's so out of focus up here, it's all a bit mushy anyway. So I know this looks strange still. Well, the whole thing looks strange, but the end result will hopefully speak for itself. So we're now going to go back to the patch tool. And now we've made a smaller island, as it were, to move from. Now, we are going to get a little bit of the grass in there. That's to be expected. But a little bit, it can kind of handle. It can mostly break that away and blend it out. This is a really tricky section here because it, it goes on the grass and it goes over the gravel. So let me just try hedging my bets and go into the left and see what that gives us. I think that might just have to be something that we come back to in a little while and fix at the end. Like I said, there's always in, in a job like this and a photo like this that's quite complicated. You can never expect it to be perfect as you go. What we can try here is now we're getting right up near the top, we can try content aware fill on this and just see if it works better on some of these smaller chunks. So I'm going to press shift and F5, make sure content aware fill is selected and click OK. And we'll just see how it does. I was going to think about this for a minute. OK, so there's a little bit of strangeness going on there, but honestly, that's not too bad. So I'm going to carry on. I'm actually going to try that on the head section as well. Shift F5, Content Aware Fill. It's always worth changing between Content Aware Fill and the Patch Tool as you move on, because as you progress and you remove more of the subject, Content Aware Fill will have an easier time doing its job. Okay, so now we've got to that stage, we can start, if we just take a look back, all things considered, we've not spent too long on that, and that is not bad at all. Down at the bottom of the shot, it looks really good. We've just got a bit of strange artifacts going on near the top but that's not a problem because now we just get the patch tool or you can use the clone stamp tool or the healing brush whatever you like and we're just going to go through now and just start patching away and blending away some of these hard edges and these other artifacts that have been sort of byproducts of using the content aware fill just spend a little bit of time doing this And a few more minutes of that, and you will have a nice image, a nice clean image with the subject completely removed. Now, you can, you can see there are still a few more artifacts here, but I'm just going to stop here for the moment because you don't want to, you don't want to sit there watching me do this for another five or ten minutes. But basically, that's that's it. So if we start with the before and the after you can see that's actually a really tricky job that we've handled with relative ease just using a combination of the clone tool to split the object into different sections and then combinations of the patch tool and the content aware fill tool to make short work of the remaining bits. And that's it. I really hope you like this video um, and you learnt something from it because I think this is such a good technique for dealing with really tricky object removals and it's, some, it's, not, it's not a technique that many people know about but um, once you know how to do it, it will make removing objects in photo P an absolute breeze. Well, that's it for now. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.